All right, so analytical chemistry guys, you're going to start on a project uh, this week where you're going to design your own uh, 3D printed instrument, which I think is a pretty cool thing, and I hope you do too. And so uh, I think Dr. Schmidt's given you a tutorial I left for you in page format, you know, hard copy. Uh, but for me, often seeing somebody do a demonstration on a software package that I don't know very much about is very helpful, and I hope this short little video uh, will key, you know, give you kind of the, the key insight into how to approach this uh, computer um, design is just so easy, and it's really powerful for designing customized equipment or basically anything else you need. And it's going only only going to become more important as 3D printing and other uh, fabrication becomes uh, more readily available. So we're going to dive on in. Uh, so what you're going to be looking for is Tinkercad. Um, you just do a Google search, and you'll get a screen that looks like this. Uh, and so CAD programs are just really, really um, they're so flexible. But oftentimes, one of the trouble uh, one of the troubles with CAD is that it's it's not very accessible, it's not very easy to learn, but Tinkercad is one of those types of programs where you can dive in and just play. And by playing around with it, you can learn all kinds of really important skills. And so uh, go ahead and sign in. Uh, what I'd like you to do is so that I can have access to your um, designs and to print them, I want you to go ahead and use the 3D Printing Lab uh, account that I've set up. So uh, what you're looking for is this address, 3dprint at wabash.edu. That's your uh, email or username. And then your password will be supplied by uh, Dr. Schmidt. And if I get this in correctly, we'll be able to log in. And so boom, this is what you should see. Um, when you log in, you'll see a little Wabash 3D printing logo. Um, and you'll see, you know, some designs that I have here as an example, uh, a couple of molecules and things I've been playing with. You can ignore these. Please don't delete them. Please don't change them. That'd be a really dick move. So uh, just be nice and, and, and be careful with those. So what you want to do is uh, create a new design. So click that. And what you'll be greeted with, hopefully, is what's called the work plane. And the work plane is just sort of a uh, a playground, right? You can put all kinds of uh, designs in here. Uh, what you're going to see here on your uh, right hand side are some basic shapes. You know, you got your boxes, your cylinders, and really we can build almost everything with these simple shapes if you want to get fancy. And I hope some of you, uh, you know, have some fun with maybe you know text or some decorations on your on your design, making it a little snazzy. Uh, you know, it's, as a gamer, it's kind of fun. You can make your own custom dice. It's all kinds of all kinds of fun. And if you click here, you can see you know there's text, there's characters, there's connectors, there's even a dinosaur you know skeleton you can play around with, or a little you know skull here to to build little anatomical cartoon characters and things and you can explore these. I mean, this program is really fun. If you want to learn how to do circuits, uh, there are all kinds of neat little assemblies you can use for circuits. You know, everything from LEDs and Arduinos, it, more than you could ever want, right? Batteries. It's just a really wonderful little program that's very easy to use. So I'm going to kind of walk you through, hopefully, in the next 15, 20 minutes, um, that, that tutorial that I gave uh, to Dr. Schmidt and he probably handed to you. So let's just dive right in. Um, the mouse is really easy to use in this and directs most of your simple perspectives. So if you've ever played a video game, you know what's going on. So if I uh, use my left mouse key, that helps me select things, you know, very similar to other drawing programs. If I use my right mouse uh, key or mouse button and move it around, right, move the mouse around while holding down the right button, I move my angle, my perspective, and in the upper left hand corner you can kind of see if you want a certain perspective you can click on like front view, uh, you know, top view, that kind of thing, but right, holding down the right mouse button and moving uh, this work, the mouse around you can change the work plane uh, perspective, your view, almost like a camera. The center mouse wheel, if you have a, a wheel on your mouse, uh, you can scroll it back and forth to zoom in or out on the work plane. And then finally, um, oftentimes the work plane, it seems pretty big, but it, it, it can get crowded if you're putting a lot of things together. So if you hold down the center mouse button, or the, if you hold down or click the, the mouse wheel, the scroll wheel, and move the mouse around, it allows you to translate the plane around, to move around that plane if you've got a bunch of different projects going on. With those you know, perspective things out of the way, we can jump in. What we're going to be focusing on is just manipulating objects and a few little um, 
a few little functions up here. The most important is going to be the group and the ungroup set of commands that will allow us to take individual components, group them together into a single object, and if we want to change things around or if we make a mistake or we want to alter something, we can ungroup, fix things, and then come back and group them together. And then finally, one of the other most important uh, ones we'll be using is the align function. And they all have hotkeys, and, and I'm not going to worry about teaching the hotkeys because you're not going to use the program enough right now to really worry about them, but the hotkeys are there. They're in the tutorial. It's pretty, pretty simple. Okay, first thing we want to do is we want to grab a uh, shape. And I know this this is where I'm doing this maybe slightly out of order from the uh, tutorial, but just bear with me for two seconds. I'm going to grab that box. I'm just going to left click and drag it onto the work plane. And there you go. You'll notice a couple things happen. When I have the box around here, you know, I can move it around the work plane and it tells me if I if I have a translation, right, it tells me how far I've moved it from the original location and all that kind of stuff. And then it also tells you, uh, you know, some things like you see solid here. If you click on solid, you can actually change the color, right, if you want to. It doesn't have any functional difference, but it's, you know, if you want to see different parts of an object, you can give them different colors. You can use these sliders over here to change the size. You can see how that works here. You know, really, really simple, very intuitive. Uh, don't worry about the steps and the radius. That really only applies to circular things. Um, so now you can actually take uh, a shape, and if you click on the shape, you can highlight it, and you can do things like rotate it or move it around. So if you grab a, a corner or a vertex, right, you can move it around, change the dimension, and you can see the numbers that, uh, that will flash telling you how big those dimensions are. If you want to move one edge, right, you can grab the midpoint and move it back and forth. If you want to rotate, you can grab the little rotation. And if you stay inside that circular rotation disk, you're kind of limited by set amounts of rotation. If you move your mouse outside of the circle, you have um, much less defined, you know, much more precision in your uh, movement there. And so you can do all kinds of fun things. And then finally, there's a little witch's hat here. Um, I don't know if you can see that. Let me try to zoom in here. A little witch's hat, a little arrow. Um, if you grab that, right, you can translate this along the z-axis. And just so you know, um, in this video, I will typically refer to the z-axis as the axis that is perpendicular to the work plane, so the this axis here. It doesn't matter if you call uh, one of these x and one of these y, it's not really important, but I, I will typically refer to the work plane as the x-y plane, and that's because when you export these models, um, it's really convenient because the work plane ends up being the plane of printing um, on a 3D printer, and so you'd like to have your model uh, resting on the work plane uh, as if it's going to be printed because that's how we're going to print them. It's not a big deal if you don't. I can rotate it in the program, but you know, just to kind of keep it uh, uniform. Okay, so let's just dive right in. So you notice that when you would try to change these shapes, you, you kind of have to you know move this around and you get these decimals that maybe aren't uh, you know these lengths and widths that aren't exactly what you want. And so what I typically do is there's a little trick up here. Um, two ways you can do it. You can click this guy, and this is not in your tutorial because it's a new way to do it. Uh, you can actually go over here to the shape menu and just click on here and say, oh, I want that to be 20, and I want that height to be uh, 40, and I want the length to be uh, 20 as well, and you can fix things that way. Um, the other thing that I like to do, and I'll just mess it up real quick to change it. Um, if you go up here to the top right, you see this ruler? If you left click and drag it, and you can just stick it over in the back corner, it doesn't matter. And if you do that, now when you click on an object, it will show you all the numerical values, which I think is really cool because I like to be precise in my designs. I want to be able to um, you know, go in and say, okay, I want that dimension over here to be exactly 20, and I want this dimension to be exactly 20, and I want to make sure that dimension is exactly 40. And that's really very helpful. If you if you click off of an object, those will go away. But then as long as that ruler tool is back there in the background, and you can click and get rid of it if you don't want it, but um, it's really nice. So any shape that you click, you will have all those dimensions at your disposal uh, very, very quickly and very directly. And I like that. But you know, do what you like. OK, so if you're going to build an instrument real quick, um, what do you need, right? First of all, you need something to hold your sample. And the sample holder that we're going to be using are um, just the little plastic cuvettes that you use in many experiments. So a plastic cuvette, uh, it needs to be held by something in order to shoot light through it. So we're going to use this little red box that we've drawn. 
and we're going to make a cuvette holder. And that's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to have something to hold our sample. And so a couple different things. Now we need to, if you think about it, we need to hollow out this guy so it will have a, a cavity that we can use to, to house that cuvette when we're taking our, our readings. And so um, what I'll do is I'll just click this guy and you can do a control D, right? If you do a control D and then move, you've got a, a duplicate and that's kind of cool, but you don't have to do that. Uh, we'll just grab another box from the uh, menu, uh, basic shapes menu and just drag it over here. And again, we've got all these, these dimensions here. And so uh, the tutorial on this one, we're gonna say, uh, instead of 20, we're gonna make this 13.2. We're gonna make that 13.2. And I want this one to be pretty tall now. I want this one to be about 45. So you see we use, use the same uh, approach here to just change the dimensions of this. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this new rectangle, rectangular prism to bore a hole into that original block to, to, to house the, the cuvette. Now, if we just bore a hole all the way through and you put the cuvette, it's going to slide right through as if it were a piece of square pipe. And we don't want that. We want the the cuvette holder to have a solid bottom so the cuvette doesn't fall out, right? And so what we're going to do is if we're going to bore this, we're basically going to carve out the, the this, this second uh, prism out of the first one to make a cavity and so we don't want it to go all the way through. So what I'm going to do, in two ways you can do this, I'm going to lift this second rectangular prism up off the build plane by about three millimeters. So I have about a three millimeter bottom in the other rectangular prism. Couple ways I can do this. One, I can grab the witch's hat, right, and drag it up by three, and that's fine. Or if you're if you've got that ruler on, you go over here to this value that's over here, that's zero, which means it's on the build plane, the work plane, right? And I'm gonna hit three, because I want it to rise up three milliliter, millimeters, and you can see that. And there we go. So the next thing I want to do is I want to drag this guy and insert it into the middle of the first rectangular prism. And you might look at it and say, oh, that's that's pretty well centered, but don't make a new mistake. You gotta, you know, you wanna be careful here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select both of them, and then I'm gonna select the align function. And what that does is it gives me, since this is a three-dimensional object, right, two of them actually, I can align them along the Z, I can align them, align them along the X and the Y, right? And so if you click these little guys here, so I'll do this one up front. If I click this guy, it's going to left justify, so they have they share the same edge here. If I click here, they're right justified, they share the same edge, and if I click the middle, they're centered along, we'll call this the y-axis, right? And if I do the same thing on this side here, I could justify them there, there, or I could actually align them center, and now when I look at them, that is dead on center, they're collinear, which is really nice. Okay, now here's where the magic happens. I think this is really one of the coolest functions of, of Tinkercad, and it will just, you can design so many complex shapes using this. So remember, we're gonna try to bore a hole. So how do we do that? Well, I'm gonna click the second prism that we made, and in the shape menu here, you'll notice that it's a solid. And what we want is, we actually want to bore that out. We wanna make a hole, so we'll convert that to a vacancy or a hole. So you click on that, and notice what happens. This new rectangle, rectangular prism becomes a, a transparent piece, and then that means that it will be a negative area or a hole or a, a, a void when we combine them. So now we're gonna select both of them. And if you go up here, you'll have a group command, and you click that, and watch what happens. Boom. Now you see that that second rectangle, rectangular prism has been subtracted uh, from the first, and we've basically drilled a, a rectangular hole and made our cuvette holder, which I think is really neat. That's really simple to do and very, very easy. So there we go, we've got our, our cuvette holder. No problem there at all. But if you notice, this cuvette holder, it it's not very stable, right? It's, it'd be very easy to knock that over and spill your sample, and that, that's not a good thing. So what I'd like to do now is actually try to make a, uh, a, a little disc a little base to keep it from from falling over and so I'm gonna grab a cylinder this time nothing too fancy just grab it over here and I'm gonna I'm gonna change the size that's that's pretty small first of all I don't need anything that tall so I'm gonna go ahead and make this really small and if you remember I lifted the uh, cuvette uh, hole uh, up by three millimeters and so that left a uh, a solid foundation at the bottom of that cuvette holder that's about three millimeters. And I'm gonna maintain that as kind of my floor, my base. 
Um, remember I told you that the uh, uh, circular shapes had some special functions here. So if you go up here to the shape menu, you see sides. It's a polygon, right? And so if you look at that, that's not really a perfect circle. It's 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 truncated off, right? And I don't like that, but you know, it's up to you. So if you decrease it, now it only has 12 sides, right? But I, I like that to be pretty smooth. And so I'm going to increase the number of sides, and at 64, it becomes a pretty nice little circle. Um, obviously, that base is not very large. That's you know about the size of a quarter, not even. So I'm going to bump this up. I think the tutorial uses something around, you know, like 70 millimeters, and oh, I don't want it to be that kind of an oval, so I need to make sure both uh, sides are 70, and here you go. And now we can kind of just manu manually put that in there. And again, you can see, oh, that's almost centered, but there's no reason to um, accept uh, almost. That's not good enough when you're designing precision things. And so let's select both of these, and you can imagine now what we're going to do. We're going to use the alignment tool again to make sure that these are aligned along the Y and the X axis. And if we do that, you'll see here that they are aligned. And you see this weird little, like, there. you see the square within the circle. And that's fine. That just means that both of these geometries are touching the same plane, right? Because they are both resting. The bottoms of those shapes are resting on the work plane. Uh, and so we're good there. We can see that. So what we're going to do now, I think we're happy with that, is we'll grab both those shapes. And we're going to use the group command. And you'll notice they shift to the same color. We still have our cavity. We now have a nice secure base, right, to, to hold that nice and steady so we don't knock anything over. Now, you'll notice here that three millimeters may be a little too thick, but if you want to cut it down to two in your design, that's fine. But please don't make a floor um, or a bottom thinner than two millimeters because you need this to be pretty stable when we print. And things that are smaller than two millimeters are very, very weak, and we don't want to have them uh, where they're very easy to break. We want them to be pretty durable. OK, so we've, now we've got a cuvette holder, and we've got this uh, little base. And now what I'd like to do is begin to build the arms out here that will hold both the LED light source and the photo um, transistor uh, detector. And so what I'm going to do is just grab a little box, another little box. And I'm going to change the shape here. I'm going to make this one a little bit long. I'm going to make it about 50 millimeters long. Um, I'm going to make this, let me move it over here where you can see it. Um, I'll, I'll make it a little bit shorter. It doesn't need to be that long. Now remember, this is important. When you're, three, you're designing something to 3D print, you would like it to be you know, as minimal as possible because the more uh, volume you, you add to it, the more plastic it uses when you print, and the longer it takes to print. So if you kind of are able to cut down on bulk as you, as you design, that will really change the print time and reduce it and make my life a lot easier and help me to get your print to you faster. So I'm going to go from 20 to 15, make that a little skinny, and then finally for the height, I think I'll go with something like 25, right? That's about an inch. That's not very big. And then I want to line this up, right? So I would like to have it evenly distributed here so I have area on both sides. And so how do I align something? Ooh, that's a terrible job. Let's go ahead and just select everything here. And we're going to use the Align tool. And I want to align that along the x-axis. And I'd like to align that along the Ooh, look at that. You see how I messed up and I clicked the Z by mistake? I definitely don't want that to happen. I'd I want these to be touching the bottom. So those need to be down on the bottom of the plane like that. But you see here I've got it aligned here. Um, and now, yeah, that's aligned along the both the X and the Y. But we want the Z to be on the bottom, right? So for Z axis, we want it to be uh, aligned where it's all touching the work plane here. And that looks pretty good if you if you look at that, right? That's look at it from the side here. It's nice and symmetrical. Uh oh, look at that. Now you see an issue. When I inserted this rectangular block, it now occupies part of my cuvette cavity, and that's a bad deal. Um, now there are a couple ways you could fix this, right? You could design another block to go in there and subtract it out again, but that's a lot of extra work. You've already built that cavity, so how can we fix that? Well, what I would do is select the one object that has the cuvette holder and the base. And remember, we grouped all those objects. Well, if you want to go back, you can ungroup them. So you can hit the little ungroup function, and we've ungrouped it. Now you'll notice that the base is now separated, but the cuvette cavity is still one chunk. Let's ungroup that. Yeah, it's no different than PowerPoint or something when you're grouping objects. Now you see we've got that cavity back. 
And so now what we'd like to do is grab the whole thing. And now we're going to regroup that by just saying group and watch what happens. When you group it all together, it bores that hole all the way through everything, which is just really cool. And so now you can sit there and you can go back and forth, you can group things, you can ungroup things if you need to change them, fix them a little bit, and then regroup everything at the end. Really, really simple. And so no problem at all. The last step, however, is that we need to be able to find some way to drill a hole through this model so that the light can go from the LED that's going to be housed in a little rubber stopper to the detector that's also going to be housed in a little rubber stopper. And we, so we want to be able to shoot light from here all the way out here through our sample that's held in the cuvette, right? Well, that's pretty simple. If we want to drill a little hole through here, we'll just grab a cylinder. That's really quite easy. And we can control the shape of that cylinder, right? We can say, okay, well, we want to make sure it goes all the way through. We knew that that long rectangle was 50 millimeters. Why don't we just make this 60? And 20 is way too big. So um, I found that 10 is pretty good. So you could use 10 um, and just use that. And then now it's oriented the wrong way, right? We want it to go horizontally here, but we've drawn this vertically. So now we can use our rotation command, right? We can grab this rotation and we can rotate it so that it is now 90 degrees uh, compared to where it was, and there you go. Now, you can grab this cylinder and you can say, oh, I wanna try to fit it in there and, and move it, and oh, I, I, I can't get it lined up just right. Well, don't mess with doing it manually. There's no reason to do that. Just grab all the shapes and let's align it with the align command. So in this case, we would like it to be aligned center along the, the y-axis we'd like it to be centered along the, the x-axis, right? And then we can grab this tube and you can move it up and down uh, manually or we can just go over here to, since we have the ruler on, we can grab that value and we can change it to something like, oh, I don't know, how about about 13 or so? Oh no, what did I do? I grabbed the whole thing, that's terrible. All I want to do is grab that uh, tube that cylinder so you gotta be careful I just made a goofy mistake and you gotta watch out for that if you're selecting everything and you change something like if I do that boom it changes the whole group so all I want to do is click out here somewhere and now I'll go back and click that little tube and I want to bring that guy down to about 13 because 30 is way too high and there you go if you look at that it's nice and centered right you can see how that would be a single shot and you can look down the cuvette cavity and see that's going to shoot right through the the sample and so now all you have to do is grab that if we want to make it a void or we want to drill a hole with it we turn that into a hole and now you can see there's a little it's it's gotten transparent so now in order to actually carve it out you have to select everything and group and once the computer finishes its calculation look at that you can see right through that whole thing and you can look down in the cuvette cavity and see the hole goes all the way through and that is a completed basic colorimeter right and so now you can actually you know you would mount your LED in a little stopper and stick it in there and you mount your detector over here and stick it in there you've got a place to put your um, you know your your cuvette with your sample and you're you are good to go so at this point you would have a functional uh, instrument right once you wired it all up and, and, and nail it down so problem is that this is not very contained it's it's maybe uh, you know you maybe you'd like to be able to, to carry it around to a site if you're gonna measure something in the environment uh, or, you know you want to take it to a field site or something that's not gonna cut it so what we'd like to do is maybe find a way to enclose it right and, and you can get really fancy with enclosures and do all kinds of fun things and um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say, would it be nice if we could build this, build a container, build a box for this and put it inside? Now you could put a shoe box, right? And I mean, literally you get a shoe box and glue this to the inside and you've got a little instrument, but we can, we can use 3D printing to do a little bit better than that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and grab. Now, just so you know, you can come to basic shapes and you can try um, a whole bunch of different things and look at different things. But for right now, I'm just going to probably grab, let's see, what do I have here? Um, I don't know. Let's let's be let's be just pretty. I want you to be creative, so I'm going to do something really boring. I'm just going to grab a cylinder, right? And what I'm going to do is away from my instrument, I'm going to build a little box to put my instrument in. So what I want to do is 
you know, just try to figure out, uh, I'll make it kind of oval shaped, you know, and I'm going to grab my instrument and see, does that look like it might fit? Yeah, that's not bad. I might have to make it a little bit bigger, right? Maybe make it a little bit wider. I don't like these little uh, truncated edges, so I'm going to boost up the side count and make it nice and smooth. And then you can say, okay, well, is that going to fit? Well, if you look at that, oh, that's not tall enough, right? Because I want to be able to enclose this whole thing, except, you know, I want to make sure the, the top pops out because I want to be able to reach in and grab my cuvette um, and be able to manually remove it because it's not very effective if you have to, you know, take a lid on and off to change your sample. We like to have that, that sample uh, part sticking up. So let's, let's grab that, that guy here and we can um, just, let's see, what do we want here? Uh, that's not bad right because that would mean that all the guts or all the electronics would be um, enclosed but we would be able to reach the cuvette um, holder and pull that in and out between samples and that would be pretty nice so let's let's go with that so I'm gonna go ahead and move our san our, our instrument out of the way for a minute now how do we make this into a, a container well we would just drill out the middle right so what I would do is just um, control D and then you've got two pieces and what I want to do is, I would like the wall thickness to be maybe, um, I don't know, about three millimeters or so. So if I move this guy all the way for a minute and click the original piece, it's 73 wide, right? So I can go over here, and if I want a three millimeter wall or a two millimeter wall on both sides, um, let's just say we're going to do two and a half millimeters. So 73 minus two times. Uh, 2.5 would be 73 minus 5, which would be 68, right? So that makes that one a little bit smaller. And then if we look at the long edge here, I think the long edge is, what do we got? It's a 113, so 113 minus 5, if we have the same wall thickness, right? 113 minus 5 is going to be, what, um, 108? There we go. And so what we can see now, and I'm going to go ahead and make this second one just a little bit taller so I don't lose it. And I'm going to go ahead and just put it in and see what we get, right? That looks like just, I mean, I haven't even aligned it formally, but you can see how we're going to have a nice walled edge. And I'll go ahead and change the color so you can see this a little bit better. Oops, didn't mean to select both of them, sorry. Just want the other one. We'll go back to, to orange on that one. So there you go. Oh, I don't like that salmon color. We'll go to, we'll go to something like yellow. There we go. So there you go. So we're going to end up carving this one out of the other one. But the problem is if we look at the bottom, right? Oh no, both of those are um, touching. So if we were to carve out this one, we would have just a big tube. And that's not good because we want a flat bottom. So how can we do that? Well, pretty easy. We can just grab, um, no different than making the cuvette, right? We can say, let's make sure we're touching the, or, you know, selecting the yellow one, and we're going to make that one come up three millimeters off the bottom. So now when we look at the bottom, we only see orange because it's not touching, and that's good. So now let's go ahead and formally align it. So I'm going to select both of those shapes, right? I'm going to use the align tool just like we did before, and we'll select that to align it along the Y, select that to align it along the X, and that looks pretty good. And now we want to turn yellow into a hole. You can see it's beginning to take shape. And we'll select both of those. And yep, you guessed it, we're going to group it. So when we group it, look at that. We've made a little bowl, a little hole, a little box, right? And so now when we slide this guy in, look at that. It's, it's lined up just as well. Now, here you might want to be careful, right? Because you might be tempted to just center this, right? And you'd probably be OK, and that's fine. But I typically will off-center it a little bit. Now be careful because here um, you notice what's happening. That base that we made is sticking out. We don't need that. So let's go ahead and do a little surgery on this guy. Let's go ahead and click it and ungroup it. Remember, we can ungroup things and we see that. And um, let's ungroup again. And there's our orange uh, space. We don't, our, our base, we don't need that. Let's just delete that piece because this container that we've just made here on the right side will be our new base, but we do need to go back and group this original piece so that, boom, we've got our, make sure you've got your hole for the light pipe and your you know, cuvette will fit. And now you can just grab this one and move it along. And you might say, well, Dr. Port, why, why are you gonna, why aren't you just gonna just center it? 
Well, there's a couple things that we have to remember, right? We need to have room to have our jacks for our power, our jacks for our multimeter, and our jack for our switch. And we want to make sure that we also have room for some wiring, right? Because we're going to need to wire this thing in. So this is something you got to be careful about, right? If you're going to be wiring this later on, you need to have room to put this wiring. Or some of you may decide, you know, if you want to, you could put a battery in there later on and then you don't have to worry about power. But um, all kinds of things you can do. So this is just one example. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this off. I'm going to go ahead and uh, grab that. And I'll just go ahead and align it along the y-axis so it looks pretty good. And I'm going to give me a little bit of extra room here. And what I'm going to do now is grab the whole thing, group the whole thing. I don't like the yellow color. I'm going to go back to good old Wabash Red. And there you go. So there is a nice little colorimeter instrument. Now, you're going to say, but wait a minute, how do we make the holes for the uh, power supply jack and the multimeter jacks and the switch? Well, you would just make a cylinder, right, and make it a hole and punch it through the side. And then what I will do, once you get done drilling those holes and you're kind of happy with your design, you can um, stop there because I will actually, you, you might say, well, wait a minute, Dr. Warder, what about the lid? Well, I will laser cut you a lid to go on there and I'll put the little knobs on there so it doesn't fall down but the nice thing is the lid will sit down and you will be able to you see here you'll be able to have enough clearance to be able to remove that sample and change that sample pretty easily between runs when you're actually working on your instrument during week three so I hope that helps you get a little bit familiar with the idea of the types of steps to use with Tinkercad and all kinds of things um, the other thing I, I hope you'll do is I hope you'll be a little creative and, and design something that you think is, is a lot of fun. So if you wanted to, right, you could, you know, if you have a little um, you know, pride in what you're, you're doing, you can come over here and say, oh, here's some, you know, if we wanted to, right, we could, we could write, you know, like, let's, you know, we love Wabash, so we'll put a W on there. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know, this is probably wasting time at this point, but I kind of like doing fun things like this just to learn programs in CAD you could sit there and you know maybe you could actually you know put a W on the side of your uh, instrument uh, obviously you wouldn't want to have it sticking all the way through here so maybe something like that that looks pretty good right and then you could have um, you know you could align it um, you know that looks already oh we'll line it like that and then the trick here though is remember you can't 3D print over air so we should probably put that down on the ground so we'll just put zero and then I don't know that that, that kind of looks cool I, I don't know but I don't know the other thing you could do right is you could um, I'm just wasting time at this point but I think it's a lot of fun so anyway I hope that you have a good time working with CAD and you enjoy this process because I cannot tell you enough how powerful uh, digital design is going to be um, it's already so powerful. You think about how engineers design jet engines and all kinds of fun things. And in chemistry and science, uh, CAD is really important too for designing customized equipment that you really can't buy, perhaps. Uh, you can design your own things and 3D print them and prototype and de design things that, you know, you could be the first to invent something. That's really cool. So um, anyway, that's a good example. I think I'll stop here. Um, you know, so go ahead and give it a shot. Uh, now notice here, uh, there's no save button, right? It, the, the wonderful thing about Tinkercad is it saves as you go. So you should be okay. So once you're done with the design, you just kind of go come over here and hit the Tinkercad uh, button up here, right? And you'll t go back to the main menu. And when you do that, you'll notice uh, you'll have a picture of what you drew or what you designed, but you have the wonderful people at Tinkercad have a great sense of humor. The program, if you don't name it, gives you one of these weird names that are kind of funny. So just go here and click the little cog, go to properties, and you can just type in, uh, you know, I'll type in Porter uh, example, and you know, you can save the changes. That will help me if you can name it for your group. I would really appreciate it. Don't try not to have like four or five different files. Um, you know, if you want to make a copy, let, let's say you, you're happy with your design, but you want to change it and make it look prettier, you can go here and you can duplicate it, right? And so if you want to do that, it'll make a copy, um, and then you've got that one saved. So when you go back to the Tinkercad menu, um, 
you see here there are two copies so that you've got maybe one backed up if you're really worried about something you're going to do that's going to mess up your design but try not to make a bunch of just pointless copies I mean keep it to a minimum if you can I'm going to delete that one right now because it just takes up space and so there you go that's that's how you do it and if you're if you're uncertain on Tinkercad you can actually go through uh, they have a lot of really good uh, YouTube tutorials beyond what I've just talked about uh, if you go to lessons here it's it's really fun they'll, they'll teach you how to do different uh, techniques and whatnot but it's 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 a great little program and it's it's free um, and it has a lot of power if you if you really take the time to learn how to use it so I hope this helps you um, get started and I will be back very soon to, to print your designs and I will of course do a double check just to make sure you know everything is fine before it prints and then I really look forward to working with you all wiring up your instruments and then getting in the lab and measuring the concentration of something like copper and tap water or something that you know is, is actually of community interest and, and you can do it with very simple uh, tools that you you design yourself so I, I hope you take some pride in designing your, your instruments and, and have a good time doing this. All right, uh, thanks for your time. I hope this has helped and I will see you very soon.